Okay, before we get into Linux and all that stuff, let me just take a few seconds to explain what minimalism is, okay? These days, consumerism has been promoted by gigantic monopolies to get you to buy more shit so they can become richer, okay? They make you depressed, they fuck up the world, and then they sell you shit to allegedly cure your depression so they get richer and they can make more money, right? Uh, Apple, buy the next Mac, buy the next iPhone, buy the next adapter, buy the next charger, AirPods, yada yada bullshit, you get it, right? Your life is miserable, buy the product. The same thing has happened with software and tech, all right? Uh, get the Microsoft license that costs $365 a year. So you can have Word, Excel, and all of these utilities, right? Uh, so they can spawn you. You don't own anything. Capitalism is rental capitalism. And they got everybody convinced that this is the only way to live. And the truth is, you don't need all those products to even be happy in life, okay? Or in the software sense. And this is where Linux comes in. And in this video, I'll be explaining everything you should know and everything you need to know. So let's get into it. First of all, let's start off with Linux. Linux, not GNU slash, slash Linux. Linux. Linux is just a kernel. A kernel is a bunch of C code. I mean, nowadays it has a little bit of rust in it, but it's usually a bunch of C code that interacts with the hardware on your computer. You know those fucking Arduino thingies you probably played with? Imagine that, but like a million times more complicated. That's what a kernel is. Uh, it's basically your spinal cord. Without it, you would just be wheels. You wouldn't be able to interact with your limbs. It'd just be wheels. Hot wheels, thumb rod wheels, you get the jokes. All right. Now let's talk distributions, okay? Now a distribution is basically like an operating system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, in Linux world, okay? Let's take Arch for an example, the most popular distribution. This is basically an operating system, like I said before. It is a kernel plus a bunch of other things that allow you to do things. Uh, and OS is made up of the kernel, system libraries like libc and shit, and an init system, and a bunch of other stuff, right? An init system is the first process to run on your machine. In Arch, it's systemd. Uh, I'm gonna have people roast systemd in the comments. And some important packages like base and base develop, which contain things like sudo. Okay, let's talk about some distributions that come with these dreaded things called desktop environments. Let's start with Linux Mint, okay? And by the way, I'd like to know that Windows and Mac have desktop environments too. They're just far worse than Linux Mint. Now, if the kernel is a spine and the distribution is like the whole body, right? You got the, the shell libraries and shit. Everything else after that is just obesity, right? Desktop environments are just obesity. Arch Linux actually just comes with a teletype port, which is a terminal emulator, which is all you really need. Desktop environments and the things everybody uses. On Windows, you got that, you have a window, right? And on Windows, at the top right-hand corner of the window, you got a cross, a, rect a box, and a dot. Minimize, like, like resize and full screen. That is a, a very retarded way of doing things. You have a thick ass thing at the top, which just takes up screen space and makes everything harder to see. Same thing on Mac. On Mac, you got a fucking traffic light, right? And then they got an application launcher, which is a gigantic fucking Windows logo in the, the middle of the bottom part of the screen, the taskbar, right? And then you have to pay like $365 so you can have it to the side. Activate Windows, right? There's so many, and not to mention, there's so many extra programs that come pre-installed with desktop environments, which are just extra bloat. You don't really need those. Now, desktop environments also come with retardant floating window managers, which is what I was discussing earlier, that traffic light or the cross, rectangle, dot, whatever. You don't need that. So now let me talk about tiling window managers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I'll start my screen and get it up right here. Start. Okay, so now in tiling window managers, you don't actually need to uh, manually resize everything. If I want to open a new program, I press mod P, and I type Firefox, and then boom, it automatically opens to the side. I don't need to open it and then use my mouse to like resize it and move it to the side or any of that crap. It just handles it on its own. If I don't want it like this, I press mod M, monocle mode, and I press mod K, and it cycles between them, right? I press mod shift C, boom, I can close it. I press mod T, back in tiling mode. Let's say... I don't have the traffic light. I don't have a gigantic thing at the top that takes up space. This is a terminal. There's nothing on the top. It's just all of it is just terminal. No bullshit. No, no traffic light. And then I can launch a new one by pressing mod shift enter. Mod shift C to close that again. I can launch multiple. I can press mod K to cycle through them. I can press mod enter to bring it to the master stack. Right? And then I can, okay, let me close that. Let me close that. So this is called a tiling window manager, which is way more efficient than any like bullshit KWIN or even the dreaded ones like Windows and Mac. Those are absolutely horrible. 
I got an application launcher, D menu. I just press mod P and it opens up. Boom. Easy shit, right? And then now let me quickly talk about package managers. So to install anything on Windows or Mac, what you actually need to do is you'll need to go to the internet and then you need to search for something. And then the top few search results are going to be advertisements to virus links. So you cannot use that. And then after you search that, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on something, download it, and then you open up an installer, then you press next like 50 times. And then after that, you can finally install on Linux or whatever. I just do sudo pacman s firefox. Okay. And then it'll install and it'll update and it's done. I don't actually need to uh, do anything else. It takes about two seconds and it's already done. So this is a way better way of doing things. And now, okay, I'll quickly talk about the shell. Give it a bossy ball. Many people use ridiculously bloated programs to do simple things. Simple things like generating PDF documents. I'll show you how you can do that through the shell right here. This is a terminal. I got a doc tag file open. I press space LL and boom, the compiler opens and I, I can see the PDF. This is the speech for the YouTube video. And it opened up with the tiling window manager. I don't need to resize that shit. And I don't need wood or any of that. And okay, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about um, like computations and things like that. So this is R with a dot r and w file okay this is not a good way of doing things i'm just using this as an example i got a dot r and w file i got r and then i can make computations and then i can turn them into pdf documents no problem file management uh, i heard i got a comment on my last video and he was talking about how even though vs code takes four seconds to launch uh, because you can just like you have to locate your files but in vs code it automatically opens them up that's not true look at this okay i'm going to open up a dot tech file by pressing e with my lf file manager which is written in golang not python fuck python I open it up and I press leader N and boom, look at that. I got all the files in this directory to the side, just like VS Code, but way faster. All right, and then I can uh, press space LL to make that a PDF document. I press mod X to go to the next tab, which is the package tab I was going to show you guys earlier. Mod shift X to go back. There's another thing about window, uh, tiling window managers. It's way easier to just swap through desktops. I press mod one, two, three, four, and then I'll show you another cool terminal utility, CMOS which is a music player. I press one, two, three, four to go my track and things like that. I think it's E to add things to the track. And I add things to the track. Okay, don't judge, quit. Yeah, there you go. Way faster, right? The shell is better for virtually everything. And now, okay, before we end, I just want to give a quick note on human rights. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something people seem to ignore these days, even with all the movements and shit going on, right? On Linux or for software in general, you can see the source code, okay? On Windows or Mac, you are being spied on by Tim Apple, the US government, the NSA, CIA, FBI, all the three letter alphabet motherfuckers, the Chinese government, the CCP, because they, they, they're in bed with, they're in bed with Apple. So they kind of control Apple as well. And so with FOSS software, you can see the source code and you know it's not spying on you, right? If a man wants to know where his female partner is all the time, he wants to read her text and go through her phone every single day. That's considered like a red flag or something, right? Uh, I think like like feminists or whatever these days, they talk about how that's controlling and shit. <clears throat> now, I'm not trying to make this a political video. I'm using this as an example, right? When a dude does it, it's considered a red flag or whatever the fuck. But when Tim Apple does it, it's somehow okay. When Bill Gates does it, it's okay. When the CCP do it, it's okay. It's for your quote-unquote safety, bro, right? It's not okay, right? Think about the fact that if you have a partner who uses Apple, <laughs> You're getting cucked, okay? There's just no two ways around it. You're literally getting cucked by Tim Apple. Yay! Tim Apple owns your bitch. Tim Apple has root access to your... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm... In all seriousness, you are getting cucked to a certain degree. But either way, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. I'll make more guides explaining how to swap to Linux and all that. It's not actually as difficult as people think. And it'll make your life easier just by changing your lifestyle habits and being way more efficient. Then we can dab on the proprietary cucks together. Thanks for watching.